Welcome back to The Last Door, Season 2, Episode 1. Alright, so I've just been to Dupree's house, gotten a bunch of stuff. Let's start using the stuff. Also, for some reason, I still have a lit candle with me, which, given that it's not in my hands, I have to assume is inside of my pocket. Which... Eh, seems safe. I don't see anything wrong with that. Alright. I believe you would probably be interested in this metal. This metal. I had one just like this. Got it after the battles of Leng's Neck and Majuba Hill in 1881. A decade ago now. For distinguished conduct in the field, it said. What a farce. So you were in the army, as I thought. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Wakefield. Sergeant William Conghill, Her Majesty's 6th Light Infantry. Are you another one of those alienists? Do you doctors not realize that cowardice cannot be cured by your arts? Why are they keeping you here? The doctors say I suffer from a nervous disorder. I believe this is a term for what they themselves, with all their learning, do not know what to say. But I know the true name of my sickness. It is pure cowardice. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. His name is Alexander Dupree. Yes, I did know a man by that name. We met briefly. He was here when I arrived. What do you know about him? He was a proper lad. Educated. He listened closely to the stories of the other inmates, but he kept his own to himself. We talked a lot. He was very close to Miss Connie, too. I think they got here at the same time. But when he left, he did so alone. I wonder what has become of him since. Hmm, him and Miss Connie got here at the same time. Any connection between that, or just a coincidence? Left alone. Who is Miss Connie? She's a patient here. The lady with a temptuous character. You may have encountered her already. She has not been the same since Mr. Dupree left, you know. She always sits to the side, alone and silent. I doubt you could talk to her at all, even if you tried. She sees things. Or at least, she thinks she does. Oh, that's the, yeah, the woman at the table right now, the one that was pounding her fist on it. What did you talk about, you and Mr. Dupree? We talked about my time in the south of Africa. I don't like to talk about that, but he somehow made me want to. He was persuasive. He was very interested in one specific story, almost obsessive about it. He wanted to know every little detail. Could you tell me that story? I'm trying to find a patient of mine who has gone missing, and this could be my only hope of finding him. I don't like to relive those memories. A missing patient, you say? I... Alright. Maybe my story will be of some use, then. It happened during the Battle of Majuba Hill. I'm sure you've heard of it. In March of 81. The attack of the Boer... Boer? Boer? Boer army had taken us by surprise and our regiment was forced to split up. We quickly found ourselves alone. Just a few men lost on the barren plain. But I don't want to bore you. No, sir, you certainly aren't. Please continue. I knew I was going to have to play it, or at least see it. I felt like it was one of those things. As I said, we were few, and we were sure the enemy was lurking out there. In the cold air of dusk, a thick fog formed quickly, masking everything around us. We could barely see each other. The 
Then, the others started to disappear in the fog, which was getting thicker and thicker. I could still hear their footsteps for a while. Then, nothing. I called their names aloud, even though I knew I shouldn't. Something about the fog terrified me. I felt something in there, not far, a, a murmur, or a beating, something alive, waiting. I couldn't help walking towards it. All of a sudden, my feet felt something in the mud, a body. They were all there, dead. And I missed the rest of that. Damn it, what did that say? Then the mist cleared out. What had happened? I never knew for certain. I didn't see anything, or if I did, my mind refused to bear such memories. What happened to Captain Skid? When he finally regained consciousness, it was like someone else looked out at us through his eyes. I guess whatever, hap whatever happened affected him, changed him. I knew he came back to London. Mr. Dupree's asked me of his whereabouts. Maybe he tried to contact him, to hear the rest of the story. He was quite preoccupied by it. Hmm. Do you know where I can find Captain Skid? The last I heard from fellow veterans, he had lost himself to a frenzy of alcohol, opium, and bad company. This downward spiral led him, as many others, to a wretched... Nadir? A dirty hole, deep in St. Giles' rookery, known as the Crimson Nest. Mayhaps you'll find him there. Alive, even, if you're lucky. Here. This is a picture of our regiment. You can see him there. Ah, another location. Thank you, sir. Anything more to talk about? Nope. Let's take a look at this photograph. Photograph of combatants in the Boar... I'm just gonna call it Boar, because it sounds cool. Boar War! Among them are Sergeant Konghill and Captain Skid. Alright, now I wanted to see if I can show Miss Connie... ...these. No? Okay. Miss Connie is very upset. Please do not distress her further. Alright. I still need to find a way to get her to talk to me. <laughs> what if I show her the mask? Oh god. That was a bad idea. It's the isolation ward for you this time. The face of the playwright. I guess that's what this is. The face of the playwright. Anything changed in here? Is the dude still strapped down? Oh. A man is striking the glass strongly with his fist. His expression is of pure hate. I don't think he can see me, but I feel that, somehow, he knows I'm here. I feel like I should save him. I don't know how I would do that, though. He can't see me. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Can I prop the window back up? 
Let us keep it closed so the room stays dark and I can see clearly through the mirror. Okay. Taking the isolation ward. I don't believe I have a way to access that. Uh, let's see if I have anything new to say. To her, nope. Oh, I think they left the door open. This is where the isolation ward would be, I think. The inmate quarters? I'm assuming it's in there. I don't think there's anywhere else it could be. While I'm here, uh, do you have any reaction to this creepy mask? This seems to be important to solve the mystery surrounding Devitt's disappearance. I should keep it to show it to Kaufman when we meet again. Okay. Can see light? Anything special in this photo? No. Eh. Uh. Room 102A. What the fuck is behind that? I mean, it's probably just a person, but... <laughs> eh, you know, can't... Help my imagination. Why did I open that? Why am I going inside? What? This isn't a room fit for a person. What the hell? Not much light manages to reach this room. A freaking jungle in here. Hello, my name is Wakefield. The butterfly is not what it seems. Excuse me, but what butterfly? There is more after the scarab. Okay. The scarab is not what it seems. It looks like a fly, but it is not. I faintly hear the sound of a fly. I don't see it, though. Okay. Wait, 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 hold on. Is this the butterfly you talked about? It displays its wonderful colors, fills your eyes with awe, but this is only a show. Behind the veil, its body crawls on the dirty ground, hides in the darkness, and transforms. Another of its lies. So, what would this be? Its dark body creaks and rustles with its blind movements. Slowly, step by step, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. This one looks like a fly, doesn't it? It will come, whatever you do. It will cry out loud, looking at you from everywhere at the same time. What about this one? Him. Him? His mask. My mate from the other room used to scream at night. Always told us he could feel something under his bed. A presence. An eyeless gaze. Eyeless gaze, yes. Doesn't have any eye holes. One oh four A. There's an old pendant left on the dresser. It looks valuable.
Old Tarnished Silver Pendant. Well, I guess now I'm a thief, too. Why not? 106A. I'm almost at Dupree's former room. Also, there's somebody talking over here to the right. I'll get to them later. Oh, and it looks like Dupree's room was bricked over, based on what I just briefly saw there. An expensive-looking piece of furniture. There's nothing on it. An impressive painting of a lovely maiden. It is equipped with a fitting, magnificent frame. Is there something behind it? Can I pry it, like, cut the painting out? Burn it! No. A mirror covered... Covered of dust? <laughs> I think they should be co covered in... Uh, covered with dust, or something like that. I wonder what things it has seen in this room. Could this be the room of the patient's mate, who was afraid of a presence under his bed? Oh, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's look for monsters under the bed. Or a hole. Oh, this takes me into the bricked up room. So this is, yeah, this is Dupree's former room. The window is sealed too. Almost no light can reach the room. Yeah, actually, how am I seeing anything? Should I have my candle out? Door is bricked up. Why would they do such a thing? I doubt anyone has slept in this place in a long time. Seems one of the tiles is loose. It did seem like there was something here. I cannot get it out with my bare hands. It's too heavy. All right, let's try this. There's something there, half buried in the soil under the tile. It's a long dead bird. Just feathers and bones. What does it have in its beak? It's holding something in its beak. It's not an eyeball, is it? Oh. Oh, it's a glass eye. Okay. A dirty and horribly deformed glass eye. Nothing else in there. Can I put it in the mask? <laughs> I don't know. What the hell am I going to do with this? I'm sure its meaning will become clear. It is eyeless, but not blind. Okay, glass eye, so I guess that came from... him. Yep, 108A. That's Dupree's former room. The one I was just in. Bunch of bricks. Either the construction is recent and not yet finished, or they were in a hurry to seal this room. Okay, is this Connie? Isolation cells. Yeah, Connie's in here. The door is shut and locked. There's no way to open it. Eyeless but not blind. You, uh, know anything about this eyeball? No? Alright. Okay, I think it's time to go visit. Oh, shit. 
This is the slum of St. Giles. The Crimson Nest shouldn't be far. This looks familiar now, doesn't it? A certain dream. A certain person with a... What did he have? A wooden leg or... I don't know if it was a wooden leg, but... You know, the click-clack of the... Thing that I forgot the name of? Doesn't he recognize it? From his dreams? Sloft gl <laughs> Sloft. The soft glimmer of this street lamp casts a comforting glow on an otherwise empty street. Is it gonna happen? I'm waiting. Yep. This man, he looks like the man from my nightmares. He is blind in one eye. The empty socket glistens in the lamplight. He seems to want something from me. In my dream, the man said, give me back what he took. Oh, I guess that's what the glass eye is for. Well, I'm glad I did that before coming here. I'm guessing I can't go past him unless I give it to him? Yeah. Alright, here you go. I'll see you later. This must be the Crimson Nest. I have heard of such places, where people lose their minds to opium shipped from the Orient. I never thought I would set foot in one. The small window casts a little light into the alley. There's something disheartening about his feeble glow. It's an opium den! Yay! And looks like somebody's dead. An addict completely asleep. Well, or maybe he's just asleep too. What is the matter, madam? My husband. He's unconscious. Please, dear, wake up. I'm a doctor. Please, let me see him. I'm so sorry. He's not breathing, and he has no pulse. Your husband passed away hours ago. No. No, it can't be. Madam. I'm late. This time I couldn't save him. What do you mean, this time? I discovered my husband's addiction to this hellish drug they call opium months ago. At first I thought he was sick, as I saw him grow thinner every day. Then I discovered he was visiting this place. I was very worried. I tried to dissuade him, but he wouldn't listen. The addiction was stronger than he was. At times he was away for days. I would come here and find him passed out. The only way I could wake him was to put these smelling salts under his nose. Now it's too late. Here, take the vial. Maybe you'll, you will be in time to save another soul from this curse. The pungent fragrance of lavender's smelling salts clears the brain, steadies the nerves and counteracts faintness and weariness. It is invigorating. Always a delight and a comfort. Okay, can wake somebody up if I need to. A man with a lost gaze, his mouth open. A woman looking at the roof with her eyes going white. She 
she's muttering some ramblings. The musician is intoxicated with a drugged smoke that fills the air. The repeated arrangements gives the sensation that time flows slowly. Short-haired woman, smoking without worry. Hello, I'm looking for a man who I believe frequents this establishment. A war veteran from the south of Africa called Skid. He is riding on a slate. I... Can you understand what I'm saying? He has written, Can't hear. So I suppose I should communicate with him by writing on the slate. Looking for Captain Skid. Don't know. He doesn't know the captain's name, then. Okay, let's uh, show him a photograph. He's written something else. Object of value. What does he mean by that? Okay, pay him for information. Alright, well I'll just use this pendant that I stole from a patient's cell. Because I'm such a nice guy. Thank you, sir. Man is curled up under a blanket, trembling as if he trembling as if he was freezing. It could be an effect of the drug. Let's warm him up with a candle. Or not. This young couple seems to have come here together to enjoy the despicable vice. Hey. Good bonding time. A table with several opium pipes on top. Some of them have been used recently. I'm guessing I'm going to have to use the smelling salts to wake him up. Wherever he is. A Chinese screen with floral ornament. It's Captain Skid, no doubt. He is unconscious, but he still breathes. Oh, that was him? I thought that was like a pile of books or something, or bottles on the ground. A bunch of huge pixels. Alright. Wakey, wakey! <gasps> What's the matter? Who let you in? Get out! My name is Wakefield. I need to talk to you. Are you Captain Skid, Her Majesty's 6th Light Infantry? That title belongs to me no more. Who are you? And what do you want from me? Leave me alone with my misery. A soldier that used to serve under your command told me I might find you here. William... William Conghill. Yes, I remember him. We served together. I have made many mistakes trying to forget those years of my life. Now I'm afraid those memories will follow me to my grave. I'm looking for information about a man called Alexander Dupree. I used to know Dupree. He was not a man, but a fiend. What do you want with someone like him? There are certain secrets that are better left undisturbed. A patient of mine has disappeared. Alexander is the only one that may know his whereabouts. If it is true that Dupree is involved in your patient's disappearance, then I am afraid the matter is out of my reach. Yours too. Now, please, leave me alone. Have you ever heard the name Jeremiah Devitt? I must find him. Devitt. No, I have not. I found your medal. It was in a house of... It was in a house of Paul Street, door 26. You were there, right? You think you know what you're doing, but you cannot imagine what you were getting into. I'm asking you for the last time, leave and forget this matter. 
I will not leave until I find the answers I am seeking. Tell me what I want to know. You fool. That's... <sighs> for the devil's sake. Alright. If you want to ruin your life, you're free to do it. What really happened on Majuba Hill? Sergeant Kong Hill told me the story, but his details were... confusing. I will never be able to forget that day. Nobody knew what really happened. Command decided that we must have been ambushed. Now I know better. There was something in that fog. Something that did not like us entering its domain. A... sentinel of some sort. That thing is what killed my soldiers. Okay, could you... Give me more information, that's it? Tell me more about this... Sentinel. I guess not, uh... How did you meet Alexander Dupree? I was in the veteran's hospital, recovering from an illness unknown to the physicians. An ailment of the soul. Dupree managed to contact me there. He wanted to know my version of the story. What had happened to me in the Battle of Majuba Hill. Do you know why he was so interested in your story? I did not know immediately, but with time, I realized. The truth about what happened to me was important to his activities, as was I myself. But if you think he tricked me, you cannot be more wrong. I wanted to enter the dragon's mouth. I burned with a need to know. What was Mr. Dupree doing then? You really do not know, do you? Have you ever heard of the playwright? Yes. I've heard of it before. Miss Connie was shouting the name. As I imagined, you know nothing. Dupree is not alone. He is but the peak of a pyramid, a vast group in which powerful people take part. A society acting in secret, ruled by a single sacred law. See that no one knows. I was part of it. Dupree himself recommended me. We gathered every month. What we saw, you cannot imagine. A curtain of normalcy protects the mind from... something. An outer something. The fog of the veil protected us. But through the veil, we could peek out into the abyss. We could know of the unspeakable shapes that writhe beyond. A black nothingness. Entirely full of horrors. We could never cross the threshold. What we saw was forbidden. Look at me. Forbidden. I could not bear it anymore. So I ran. I ran and I hid from them. It was too late to run. Or to forget. I must go back to East Hill and try to talk to Miss Connie. If what the captain said is true, she must have been one of them. She could know where to find them. Uh. Guess there's a show to watch.
Okay, what the hell was that? I must have fainted. What is this? Where am I? I guess I fainted from the opium fumes? There's a blanket on the bed. I'm taking a shred of this blanket. <laughs> okay, why? Cool. Alright. I regularly take shreds out of blankets for no particular reason. A matchbox. This could be useful. What, am I going to be constructing a torch or something? I've got matches and shred of a blanket. Old piece of furniture. Oh shit, I am going to be making a torch, aren't I? I think I'm going to rip the leg off. There are marks in the dust on the floor. It looks like the chair has been moved recently. Oh, no, just a hole behind it. Shifting the chair revealed a small dark hole in the wall. Can I see inside? No. Oh. That's not going to burn for long. I could swear I saw a pair of feet in there. Who is there? We have met before. I cannot see you. Who are you? Do you not recognize my voice? No, I'm sorry. I do not. Do you know what this place is? It is the starting point. The first place to look. But who are you? What are you doing here? Remember this. I will not be here forever. Darkness will light your way. Stay out of the light. Then, I will disappear. And you will be alone in the end. I don't understand. Tell me who you are. The flame has faded out. The blanket is now ruined. I must take it with me. Why? Why do I have to? Okay. <laughs> I'll take the whole blanket now. Sure. Nothing else here. I cannot see outside clearly. The door is shut for good, and it has no knob. No keyhole, even. Okay. Well, he said the darkness will light my way, so... Maybe I cover up the light? Devitt, is that you? Devitt. He said stay out of the light. No. Tell me, why are you doing this? Is it because you care about your patients? Or out of scientific curiosity? Is it for your pride? Because it is your professional responsibility? Or is it because it is the right thing to do?
Why are you doing this? <gasps> no, Devitt. It's all right, my dear friend. How are you feeling? I feel dizzy. What happened? Where are we? At my house. I went to East Hill to meet you, and found you inside one of the cells, unconscious. Your clothes stenching of opium smoke. I'd brought you here. You've been out for a day and a half. I... I think it's coming back to me. I was at one of those... opium dens. I might have passed out after breathing that dense smoke. Listen, I have much to tell you. My investigation unearthed a great deal of new information. Alexander was indeed institutionalized in East Hill, but his files were missing. I managed to track down a man who knew him. He told me a story he would not believe, and... There was this woman, a patient at the hospital. She was completely out of her mind. She attacked me. What is happening to these people, Kaufman? How is, how is Alexander related to Mr. Devitt? I think this patient, Miss Connie, might know how to find Alexander. We must go back there and talk to her, whatever it takes. I'm afraid that will not be possible. What do you mean? Frau? Is that how you pronounce that? Frau? Something. Connie is no longer at East Hill. She escaped last night. God almighty. Do not worry, my friend. I think I may know where she is hiding. Get ready. We must leave promptly. Oh, I have to actually move. They're coming. Oh! Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, when this first started, you were playing as... I, I guess I was as... As Connie. And you were boarding up the windows. They're coming. They... Is our the us. We are they. They're letting him in. Now that the door has been opened. They're coming. That's the end, isn't it? <laughs> I knew it. The adventure continues in episode two. That was a really good season premiere. It reminded me of why I liked the series so much in the first place. I mean, the first season was pretty damn good. It had a lot of things that I liked about it, although it was kind of up and down, particularly in terms of the puzzle design, which sometimes became really annoying and just completely ridiculous. However, for this episode, the puzzle design was slightly silly and convoluted, but for the most part it was just actually just good and straightforward. There's nothing too ridiculous. I think just... I think the most ridiculous it got was the whole you can't pay for the paper because you gotta make change, but you don't have the change, so you gotta find a coin in a jar inside of the asylum and then go out to buy the paper. That was a little bit silly, but, you know, it's it's a small enough scale game and, and the solutions are sensible enough that I never got stuck. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, that's kind of silly. But it was never frustrating. And most of the other puzzles are just... just good. You know, straightforward, sensical stuff. So I think this is one of the strongest episodes in terms of puzzle design. 
which is very nice to see. And it's still got that, still got that wonderful sound design. All this kind of creepy, kind of, I'm not sure how to describe them. There's like these certain iconic uses of sound, or, I, I want to say, I don't know if iconic's the right word, but you know, like the, the man who's walking with the, uh, the support of that wooden thing, uh, crutch or whatever the hell you call it. That click and the clack of it, or the man beating on the glass. Or the sound of somebody breathing behind a wall. Just these certain kind of things that are really damn creepy in how a sound is designed. And it's still got it. So wonderful. So, I hope you enjoyed watching me play through The Last Door, Season 2, Episode 1. And I will certainly be back for Episode 2 when it comes out.